Plainfield, New Jersey, a middle-class city with a strong sense of community. And smack in the middle of town is a soul food restaurant named Blackberries, run by a once successful caterer named Shelly Withers. Hello. The gang's all here, huh? My catering business was fantastic. I had such a tremendous following. It just seemed natural that I would move on to open a restaurant. Hi, how are you? Welcome. And with her mother, Mary, investing her entire retirement fund into the restaurant, Shelly's dream came true. Daddy put the check in the bank this afternoon. Oh, OK. I think it's a parent's responsibility to be supportive of their children. I am so happy with the way the restaurant turned out. The decor is phenomenal. I'm not sure if I understand the reference. And Blackberries has the best soul food in town, no doubt. Fried collard greens is my favorite. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The shrimp was firm. That's because I forgot I'm on the stove. <laughs> perfect location, perfect food. But where are my customers? The problem is Shelly is in denial. She thinks that the decor is amazing and the food tastes spectacular. I like it. But the food is suffering, the customers are suffering, and the restaurant is suffering. The macaroni actually looks <laughs> like fun. Shelly believes that all of her food is better than any chef out there. Too done? Too done is perfect. She feels this is the way I want it. It tastes good. It doesn't matter what someone else thinks about it. It being my restaurant, I'm going to have it my way. I don't want the food to touch. I say it every day, and okay. you're doing it to me anyway, right? It don't make sense to me. Shelly is a super control freak to the 110th power. I need you to knock these motherfuckers down. Just get it out. What, what, what system are we side. following here? It's no system. We have 16 people working back here and 16 people doing their own system. Table five right there in the front. Where is it, please? Guys, it's hot back here. Why is everybody back here? Because we ain't got no food out here. She thinks she knows what she's doing when she actually has no idea what she's doing. Tell me what I can do to help. I don't, I don't understand what's going on. And that brings a lot of chaos here. Let me see that plate. She's helping the restaurant to fail even more. Not that many customers, though, huh? Things are bad. I'm $200,000 in debt. I'm barely holding on here. I got $14 to my name. Bro. Like I tell Shelly, it's just not only her if this restaurant fails, because I have sacrificed a lot to make sure that the doors didn't close. I believe in the power of prayer. I think Chef Ramsey is the answer to her prayers. What an amazing, buzzy little town. Great location for restaurants. Hello. Hello. Good How afternoon. Are you? Welcome to Blackberry. Thank you. Very happy to be here. I'm happy um, to have you here. Wow. Look at this place. Somebody having a party? No, no party. We're no. just having um, lunch. Okay, great. Let me seat you. Okay. I'll sit over here. And this big boy there, who's this that? This is James. I'm James. James. What's your job? General manager. Stop it. With a baby face like that, you can't be yeah, management. Get out of here. <laughs> You look about 18. How old are you? I'm 30 years old. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Aging well. And this is? Mom Mary. Mother Mary. Yes, sir. You look great. Nice Thank to see What do you do? The cakes, the pies, the desserts, really. She's our baker. OK, great. Lord Ramsey is here. I don't want to be sweating all over him. <laughs> you are. Can I kiss him? Can I give him a kiss and thank him for coming or what? Yeah, it's about to be our own. Hey, how are you, bud? How are you? How are you doing, Good to see you. You're running around. Pleasure. You're busy, yeah. aren't you? I have to be. Huh? Amazing. Somebody's got to get it done. How long have you been here? About three years. Who and designed this place? I feel like Donna Summer's going to come through the door. That would be Michelle. I think that would be me. Oh. I absolutely love the decor. And dance, party, that's me. Wow. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> me. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> OK. Well, uh, hello, darling. Look at those beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> I asked my fiance if I could kiss you. Fiance? He's our manager. The one? Yeah. Oh, come on. Sexy, right? <laughs> You'll get arrested for cradle snatching. Mm, hey, general manager, say. come here. 
Get that beard over here. You didn't tell me that you're dating the owner. <laughs> we are, Excuse me. We are engaged. <laughs> amazing. And was it love at first bite? Yeah. Wow. Way to a man's heart is a stomach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's a little younger than I am, but he's my sexy chocolate. <laughs> Let me sit down, have a quick look through the menu, start ordering. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Gordon. <laughs> I'm going to see as much as I can. OK, uh, right, let's go for uh, collard greens. Yes. That smothered pork chop sounds delicious. Let's go for some mac and cheese as well, please. OK. The chitlins. And desserts. How's the bread velvet cake? Delicious. OK, great. Very well, thank you. I'm starving. Okay. We're going to put your order in. Excellent. All right, guys, we have our order for Chef. All right, let's do it. I really think that Chef Ramsay is going to say that the food is phenomenal. With the pork chop, put some mac. This is not hot. Just microwave it. This is the craziest decor I've ever seen. Wow, another record. Yeah, they're all over. So her first name is? Eloise. Eloise, yeah. Eloise uh, what's the oh, oh, Jesus. What happened? Was it the fried chicken or the cornbread? What, what went? Chitlins? Oh, my what happened? goodness. I have no idea. I've never seen that before. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Did somebody headbutt the wall? It was shocking to find okay. that it was a hole in the wall with a record on it. I was just like, oh, my God. Like, what the hell is that doing there? I've heard about broken records, but Jesus Christ. OK, let's get out of here quick. <laughs> I, I'm afraid to touch any other records. Alright, here you go. Oh, now you know that is a pretty plate, right? <laughs> Shelly is delusional about how fabulous her food is. I hate the macaroni and cheese. Just looks like crap on a plate. This is pork chop, the smothered pork chop. Thank you. Just like someone shot on my plate. It's just dry. Bland. Nothing seasoned there. How's your pork chop? Yeah, the pork chop is dry. The mac and cheese is way overcooked and very mushy. You'd think a soul food restaurant would pride itself on cooking mac and cheese, but no, it's just all. Is that heated in the microwave? Though? No, I think they just put it in the, in the oven to warm for our lunch service. Thank you. What's wrong? He's saying that the macaroni and cheese is dry and overcooked. Ooh. He asked me, have we warmed it in the microwave? I told him, no, it just came out of the oven. They may have put it in the microwave for a minute. Only for a minute, though. Everything is cooked to perfection. There is nothing on that menu that is not perfect. OK, here we go. I'm taking over now. Fried collard greens. Move it to the middle. Put an orange chip in the middle. That's it. How can you actually say this is a soul food restaurant? Or the collard greens are not tasting like collard greens, since it's just like pepper soil. You know, you can't have food tasting like that. Tell Chef I said to taste those collard greens. They're perfect. Here you go, Chef. Collard greens. Wow. Yes. OK, great. Thank you very much indeed. Mm. Wow. It's bland, no seasoning. It's just fried and soggy and limp. Uh, James, what do you think? You got to eat it all together. If you eat it all together, mm -hmm. it should. Well, I did eat it all together, but it still stayed bland. Thank you. Yeah. My God. What is he saying about our stuff now? A little bland. Oh, my God. Collard greens. It's great. He's crazy. Where's the chitlins at? It's in the microwave. They're delicious. If we get one out of three, we might be all right. And this is the chitlins and okra. OK. Chitlets. I mean, I know chitlets are the intestine, but should they really stink? Before I do taste them, I'd like to pray to God before I put any of that in my mouth. <laughs> in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. <laughs> we rebuke the spirit of the devil. Yeah. You are prayed over. We guarantee you that you are not about to succumb to those chitlins. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. In Jesus' name. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> I just had to pray over Chef before he ate the chitlins. What the fuck? It's 
no prayers going to save me on this one. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, chitlets, chitlets. I need the toilet, excuse me. I knew they'd come out quicker than they went in. Chef Ramsay is a mess. Oh, those chitlets are gross. Look at that, they have to throw one up. Throw one up? Holy crap. <laughs> are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Oh, they stink. Oh. <laughs> Shall it be taken it lightly and not seriously at all? Is it in the children's bathroom? I'm not sure, but I guess with the prayer didn't work. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. You're not used to that soul food, huh? <laughs> Thank you. I want to see what's going on. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> so we've got the. Red velvet. Red velvet. Mom Mary makes all of our desserts. Mom Mary. Yes. Wow. Thank you, babe. You're welcome. Mm. Wow. That is delicious. Finally. Some good fucking food. Wow. How do you like this? Yeah, it's delicious. Well done. Wow. I had to wait to the end. I've been saved by Mother Mary. Of course, the red velvet that mommy makes is going to be beautiful, right? Because mommy made it. I'm going to punch him in the face. You watch this thing. Just show me into the kitchen, please. Yes, Thank you. I sure will. Yep. The chef is on his way back. I'm scared. I would, I would, I'm scared to bring him here. Shelly doesn't listen. When Ramsey gets back there in the kitchen, we'll see if she even opens up to any suggestions or not. Hi, how are you? How are you? Nice to meet you. Mateen. Mateen, good yes, to see you. Good to see you, too. Likewise. Portia. How are you? Hello, chef. Pleasure. And this is Tyrone. Oh, nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you, buddy. Uh, so, I just had an embarrassing lunch. Let's start from the top. Pork chop, dry, bland, no seasoning. And the macaroni cheese was an embarrassment. The fried collard greens, there's no seasoning. Everything's just fried, so it just tasted of oil. And horrible. The chitlins, but the smell of them almost made me want to gag. Do not believe that there's that much wrong with my food. Who is the head chef here? I am. Show me tonight. Okay. Well, you think you are the head chef. All right. As Shelly and the staff prepare for dinner service. Woo! My food is good up, you know, to my standards. <laughs> chef Ramsay returns and is greeted by an unexpected guest. Oh, what is that? Bloody hell. Damn. Oh my God. Wow. It's just 10 minutes before the doors to Blackberries open, and Chef Ramsay is greeted by something unexpected. Bloody hell. That. Have you got a bin? Yes, Chef. The moves? Just by the front door. Huh? I, it's by the door. No. We just had the exterminator. Y you paid for the exterminator? Sure. Get your money back. OK, that's not funny. I've got an incinerator outside. Can you take that? No? As a general manager, do something with it. The mouse. The mouse? It was in the entrance as I walked in. On the left-hand side. Baby mouse? A mouse? We always have the exterminator once a you month for prevention. Are you serious? No fucking way. A mouse? Come on. At the front door, not even in the kitchen. Hey, no. guys, be careful of mice. Can you show me where you found that at? It was at the front door. Like where? Oh, well, where's the front door in your mind? I can't believe that. I came in the door, walked in there, saw him, bang, right there. Right here. Do you have it on film? Are you kidding me? What, you thought I brought it in out of my pocket? Yeah, I think you did. Are you, are you, are you fucking dreaming? I arrived, the never, mouse was there. Never, never, never here, never. There was no, no, never no mouse right here. Right, OK. Absurd. So we had the exterminator last week. They come on regular occasions. Yes. We yeah. have an issue with mice. 
That's why you have an exterminator. We, we don't have an issue with mice. An exterminator comes in okay. regularly. Just... Let's, let's, you know, I do a little investigation. Let's go. Dwayne, when was the last time you spotted a mouse in here? I, I've never seen one. You've never seen one? No. Good. Except that one that was under the steam table that was dead a few months back. <laughs> Almost a year back. He found a mouse in the front door. I've never been so embarrassed and humiliated in my life. This is ridiculous. Really ridiculous. And sad. I never seen a mice in here. Perhaps you planted that uh, mouse. And you are suggesting that I brought it in. I was like, hmm, I put it together, like, just for TV's sake, maybe. I, I wish you would talk a little bit of sense. Fuck the TV. Put really? your money where your mouth is, in front of your staff. I want a meeting upstairs with you and everybody now. Yes. Mice out of his pockets and stuff. Yeah, chasing responsibilities for something, man. How you gonna help if everybody keep bullshitting him? A mouse in the front. It don't matter. It's, it's, it's mice infested all over this place. It can happen. It can happen. Shelly. Huh? Can I have the two seconds, please? Okay. Uh, all, all of you. This is very, very important. So. I was telling him, seeing him, like, almost, like, plant that, uh, vermin and everything. Mm -hmm. So, just look at James for me, two seconds. I walked in the front door, a mouse. The mouse that you planted, I know. They told me. But it's OK. No, it's not it's OK. It's a show. It's got nothing to do with TV, nothing to do with your business in the shit. I am not going to stand there and even attempt to take that crap from you. You can take your restaurant and stick it. I'm gone. I'm out of it. You out of here. I'm out of here. Excuse me. Go. See you later. Shut it down. Let's go. It's over. After discovering a mouse in the restaurant, Okay. Do you have it on film? And being accused of planting it. The mouse that you planted, I know. Chef Ramsay has had enough. Take your restaurant and stick it. I'm gone. You out of here. I'm out of here. Excuse me. Go. See you later. Shut it down. Let's go. It's over. It is not over. Could you please shut up? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I have worked tremendously trying to support my child, and I don't understand. You know, it's, I, I don't understand what's happening today. Honest to God, I don't. Please don't leave. Yeah, no, I'm out of here. Please don't Because you're leave. exaggerating. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Just yeah. me and you? Yeah. I, I take back what I said as far as you doing something like that. I don't want to defame your character, but it just was I'm lost for words that that happened, and it, it just, it, it just like shocked me, and I, I apologize. That's the most sensible thing I've heard you say since I've been here. Thank you. Sure. The combination of Mother Mary's plea and an apology by James are enough to keep Chef Ramsay at Blackberries. Welcome to Blackberries. At least for now. Your server this evening will be Tina. She'll be right with you. The grandma's original fresh chicken. OK. Southern style fruits. And I'm going to get uh, macaroni and cheese. All right, ladies, let me put these orders in. First order, shrimp and grits. Would probably be a shrimp and grit night. Am I seeing right? You've got a, a free burner wok there. Is that a pizza oven? Yes, that's my pizza oven. And the wok. Okay. I love it, Chef. Shelly, how can you cook soul food in a wok? Watch me, Chef. Watch me. Soul food is supposed to be cooked slowly. Soul is cooked with love and soul, not in a wok. Shelly's cooking green beans in a wok, cooking rice in a wok, cabbage in a wok. We're not a Chinese soul food restaurant. We don't need a wok, OK? That's the first for me, a southern food restaurant with a Chinese wok and a pizza oven. And you have an oven that doesn't work right there. 
Tell me what's working, apart from you. <laughs> we haven't had correct working ovens. We don't have the correct stoves, the correct fryers, grills. You know, how can we produce really great food if we don't have really great ovens? How do you manage to fry everything in one fry like that? Very hard. A lot of prayer. After discovering unusual and dysfunctional equipment in this soul food restaurant, Chef Ramsay turns his attention to Shelly and how she runs her kitchen. Fried chicken, please. How many white meats do you need? Fried chicken, Mateen. If I'm going to call the artist, you can't call Honey, the artist. Honey, do again. your chicken. I'm do doing this. it. Let's get one thing straight. OK. Can you please work on ticket one? We are. Are we? I mean, I don't understand what you're okay, doing. You're walking uh, in damn circles. Shelly has no concept of what it means to actually run a proper, functional kitchen. Portia, one ticket at a time I need you to do for Shelly, that's I, what I, I'm, I'm doing. OK, just one. Just do one. That's, what, that's how I do, one. Just make it and send it. That's it. Make it and send it. Unbelievable. And where's the control, the chef, the, the system? What, what system are what we I'm following doing. here? It's like there's no system. I mean, this is a joke. If you try to get one, she wants to argue you down. You know, she wants to argue you down and make it seem like you're the one that's wrong, or it can't be run like that. But it's not making it's, sense. Or it's too Look right down there. Look down there. Yeah, Look. It's like, you one, know, two, three. Seven down there. I want you guys off the line. Just go. Watch out. Just back up. It's getting ridiculous already. It's been an hour and a half. She just kind of want to get up and move. How long are we waiting, Dwayne? Close to an hour. An hour. my first time in here, and it's just dysfunctional. There doesn't seem to be one person controlling it. I have the recipe. I'm the exec. Oh, my Shit. god! Shelly thinks she knows what she's doing when she actually has no idea what she's doing. We need a miracle, a prayer, hands on bending knees, because this is going to the shits. Here we go, fried chicken. Despite the ongoing chaos in the kitchen, dishes somehow make their way to the dining room. And that's the result. You wait 90 minutes, and this is what you're lucky to get. Oh, my God. Macaroni and cheese. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it's crazy in there. Huh? Huh? That is crazy in there. Always. In yes. there's a war zone. Always. Huh? Always. Welcome to Blackberry. Step Ramsey. That's it, hell. What a welcoming. It's day two at Blackberry's. And Chef Ramsay knows that before he can implement changes, he has to focus on how this restaurant is run. And so he starts the day with a staff meeting. I want to go around now to identify things that you know that are wrong with the business and things that you'd like to change in the business. I think um, one thing is I've known Shelly. We kind of grew up together. And she is a control freak. If she does not see it being implemented the same way that she would do it, she's going to jump in and she's going to take over. But is it overbearing? Is it too controlling? Yes. It's either her way or the highway. Mm -hmm. And it inhibits anyone to show off their skills or what they can do or what they can bring to the restaurant. But you have someone that's down your throat constantly sure. and really doesn't know what they're doing. If you were so right, obviously the restaurant wouldn't be failing or in a situation that is it. No, but it's a very valid point. You've employed some talented individuals. OK. Portia. Shelly needs to learn how to delegate responsibility. She can't be hands-on all the time. It creates a problem. Oh, my god. Shelly, in all honesty, you take somebody out of what they're supposed to be doing and make them do something else. And that's one thing you got to realize, and that happens more often than I not. I think that you talk too much and you know too much. See, this and is the that attitude. Is part of that's the problem. what makes this so rough. Dwayne, well, be at quiet. One time or another, Dwayne. everybody has been Dwayne. pushed off their position. Dwayne, calm down. I'm not. I wasn't upset. Dwayne, I tried to tell you something. I'm, I'm asking right you right. to calm down. I'm not. I'm not I upset. I want you to leave. Good night. I don't have Thank a problem you so with much that. Because the truth, honesty hurts. The truth hurts. Right, we're Shall gonna we fix that. We're gonna fix that. Dwayne, 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 just bear with me for two minutes. Sit down, please. Okay. My goodness. What is wrong with you? I made one comment. What's become evident is how fragmented we are. But that starts from the top. Chef, Shelly have to learn how to listen. Everybody tries to communicate with her and support her. But if she's going to be stubborn and not listen, the doors will close. And that would just break my heart, I mean, tremendously. 
from now on in, open, honest dialogue. Got it? Yes. Shelley? Shelley, I can't hear you. I'm listening. No? We're all I'm in listening. together. Are we going to be open-minded? I have been open-minded, as far as I'm concerned. Why do you say that? This is not a joke. Your livelihood is on the line. I mean, you're in a serious, serious position. There's no reason why you cannot be open and honest, because my I'm 72 years old. Oh, and I thank sense. God that I've been able to live this long. And these are the most important things that I try to project. Listen to what this gentleman has to say. I want to move forward. I'm here to help. Right. And the direction is to you, Shelley, because there's some valuable information that we've just listened to. We know you're the boss. What you haven't got right now is a successful restaurant. And everyone in this room, including me, are here to make that a success. Right. But you have to get out of denial. Okay. Agreed? Agreed. I can't hear you. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Only time will tell whether Shelley has really understood what the staff was saying. Come with me. Let's go in the kitchen. Let's get to work. But Chef Ramsay has already implemented a drastic change in the kitchen. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! I called a friend, Kelly Quip, and he arranged for a brand new fryer and a state-of-the-art six-ring burner, an amazing convection oven from South Bend. Incredible. Oh, um, a six burner stove, Tyrone. I just can't believe. Unbelievable. I've had it done, especially for your baking as well. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. I'm bursting at the seams. Just, I, I just can't believe it. Oh man, this is awesome. Is the walk gone? There's no way on earth we can start to move forward cooking on a Chinese wok. A wok that you cannot cook soul food on. We can have a proper system here. Where's the wok? <laughs> I am definitely going to miss my wok. But it's just going to be an adjustment for me. Oh, my god. Incredible. I just can't believe this. Happy Mary? Father God, I just can't thank you enough. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy. Oh, this is just so wonderful. This just... is truly, truly a blessing. Chef Ramsay is. He's unbelievable. I truly believe in the power of prayer. I prayed so hard that you would come and that you were going to turn this restaurant around. I'm just so overwhelmed. I thank you so much. Now that the kitchen has functional equipment. OK, there's one thing that's missing here. That's the structure. What, what system are we following here? here? We're going to work as a team. Chef Ramsay appoints a leader. Tomorrow night, my team. Yes. I want you cooking yes. and expediting. Yes. Chef Ramsay helped implement a system to help this restaurant run very smoothly from now until forever. I'm going to make something very, very simple with you all now, just a stunning mac and cheese. He also works with the chefs on some new cooking techniques. Golden brown, take a spoon and have a little taste. Chef Ramsay has suggestions. I'm going to do my best to be as open as I can. <laughs> But I just, I don't know. We are going to reopen this restaurant tomorrow night with a system. One voice, one leader. Yes. And work as a team, yes. a system. Don't change it. After the implementation of a new system in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night to give the dining room a much needed makeover. OK, good morning. Excited to see inside? Yes. Hi. Yeah. Yes? Let's go. Welcome to the new Blackberries. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, look at this side. When I first arrived here, there was the cafeteria, the menu on the wall, and it just lost that intimacy. Now it's a restaurant. Gone is the cafeteria. You have a wonderful, amazing new restaurant. Brand new tables, brand new chairs. It's a totally but... different place. Look at my elbow. Yes. <laughs> I promise you, they're not your records. 
I love my new restaurant. The artwork, the tables, it's like a dream come true. I absolutely love it. The soul is back. I'm just so excited and so grateful. I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> Shelly, how do you feel? I feel great. <laughs> oh, 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 that's rare. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, thank God my middle name's James, right? <laughs> now that Blackberries has an updated look, now for the exciting part, the food. Oh, wow. Chef Ramsay has created a fresh, new soul food menu to match it. What we've done is taken some of the dishes and modernized them a little bit, give them a bit of a, a new twist. Starting off with the black eyed pea fritters, delicious. Barbecue pulled pork sliders, wonderful starter. Entrees, fried chicken and waffles with the honey butter. Oh, snap! I Next love thing, that. A southern meatloaf sandwich done with mac and cheese and a spicy glaze, like a really nice, rich, spicy ketchup. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. Shelly looked like she was embracing the change very well. I'm glad that Chef Ramsay finally broke through to her. Is that beautiful? Dig in and have a taste. Oh, my God. Here we go. Fried chicken and waffles and blackberries. This menu is great. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. I think I have a winning combination here. Chef did it. Food, atmosphere, we're ready. Ooh, that's heavy. It's relaunch night at Blackberries. OK, we're about to open. We put a structure in place. And Chef Ramsay has given them all the tools they need to make this restaurant a success. Blackberries! Let's go. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to Blackberries. This is a nice looking menu. With the restaurant filling up. We're going to do the pork sliders. And orders coming in from the dining room. OK. Order good. in. It's now up to the newly appointed leader, Chef Mateen, to take charge of the kitchen. One jerk wings, one shorty, one chicken with white meat. Fried chicken, white meat, six minutes. Echo. Thank you. Good. Off we go. Here we go. Oh, thank you. Let's go. With Chef Ramsay's new system in place and the team working together. Shelly, six minutes on my oxtails. Echo on the oxtail. Thank you. Dinner service is off to a smooth start. Okay, here we go. We're rocking. And out in the dining room. Fried green tomatoes. Those are excellent. The customers are thrilled with what they are receiving. I need an oxtail shorty. Okay. Hey, Dad, you okay? The restaurant is packed. Wait till you see it. You're not going to believe it. I need an oxtail and a shorty right now. I'm on the line a little bit tonight. Shelly. Shelly, he was asking for stuff, and you're just ignoring him. I'm coming. OK. All right. Love you, Dad. You OK? Let's go, please. All right. Shelly being on the phone is totally disrespectful and a slap in the face to her kitchen team. What she's saying is, I don't give a damn. It's my world, and this is the way I'm going to do it. The rest of you, who cares? How long for my oxtail? What, what? Things were going really well at the beginning because they were being executed, but then I just don't think Shelly wanted to be there. I need an oxtail and a shorty first. <laughs> what? She's not in control, and if she's not in control, she doesn't want to follow it. Shelly. Yes, Shelly. It's like we just switched off and forgotten. Yeah. Why have we forgotten our systems? The most important thing about a system is keeping it, yes? Go back to your stations. I am the owner of this business, and I'm just not taking any shit from anyone. Hell no. What is this? What? Who put my corn in it? I did. It's dry. I don't want it to dry out, honey. Don't do that. Shelly. Yes, Shelly, don't do that. You're doing, you're going back again. I don't want it to dry out. Come here. No, 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 come here. Come here. Look at me. I only ask you, don't do it. Okay. Mateen, yes. we're going back again. We're going back to our old bullshit ways. Don't touch what he's doing. OK. You said right. it's dry. Was it dry, the corn? No, it wasn't no, dry. No, it wasn't, it wasn't fucking even dry. It wasn't even done yet. Thank you. I don't care what you he don't said. Care. Chef Ramsay's system works. It's this Shelly that doesn't want it to work. So when it's sitting on the side, drying out, just leave it there? What are you talking about? I don't know. I don't want to hear it. Shelly. No, sir. Shelly. I'm not talking back. Shelly, now you walk away. Bye. She's gone. Bye. See you later. It's relaunch night at Blackberries. Don't touch what he's doing. And as Chef Ramsay tries to keep everything on track, it's not I don't want to hear it. No, sir. Shelly goes off the rails. Goodbye. Goodbye. She's gone. And storms out of the kitchen. Bye. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 
What happened? They were doing so good. Yeah. Shelley started coming in and picking up bits and disrupting them. I asked her to stop it and let Mateen do it. And she got really funny. Ever since then, she just switched off. So she's, she's closed down. Shelly is a crybaby. She's not willing to admit that she's wrong. And that's pretty sad. With Shelly out of the kitchen. Stop everything you're doing. Play this one for me right now. Chef Mateen and the staff try to pull it together. OK, and we're going to send this ticket out right now. To get the remaining dishes to the hungry diners. I'm hungry. Mateen, Let's go. you've got to push it. Yes, Chef. You control the kitchen. Yes. I need right now, I need two fried green tomatoes. I need that now. Working. OK? Working. Nice. Let's go. Can you get Dwayne to take this out for table one, please? Dwayne, off you go. Table 50, let's go. Finally. Might be a little slow, but it's going to be great. With Mateen leading the kitchen. I need a side of fries up in the window now. Side of fries. Good. The final entrees make their way out to the dining room. OK, we got our food. And customers are loving the food. It's worth the wait. Wonderful, I think. You guys are good. It ran so smooth. We have the system now. This right here is the first day of greatness of many more days to come. And I loved it a lot. Everything was great. Thank, Thank you. you. With the staff completing a successful relaunch, Chef Ramsay yeah. gathers the group. Uh, OK. But there's someone missing. Where's uh, Shelley? In the office. Shelley, can I, uh, can I talk to you, please? Shelley? Shelley? No point in making yourself look any more stupid. Shelly, just two seconds. Not going to argue. She's not coming. We don't need her. Come on. Shelly needs to listen to Chef Ramsay. You just can't close ears to someone that's come to help you. Please. You really don't have anything to say. If, if you, don't you don't need to have anything to say. Just go outside. Out of respect for your staff. I love my staff. Well, then you want them to walk out on you and you'll have yeah, the restaurant? Let's go, man. I'll clean up tonight. My Forget staff. about cleaning up tonight. What about the rest of yeah. the days? Oh, dear. And I'm so ashamed of you that I don't it's know what mother. to do. Shelly, we have worked our ass oh, off. God, can you please well, get out of my If you are done, close the damn place down. Let's go, Tyrone. I don't believe Shelly deserves all this great help she got. I mean, someone like me that's been cooking and went to culinary school would kill for something like this opportunity, you know? It saddens me so much. OK. I know it's been a rough night, but on a personal note, I just want to say thank you. Why? Because you guys worked your butt off. Nobody gave up. There's something personal about soul food for me. I started a small little documentary called Kitchen Nightmares seven years ago, and my first ever restaurant was a soul food shack. It's why I started to put him back into the industry, and you guys deserve success. He did a fantastic job. Chef Ramsay, he's up there with the best angels. I'm just so delighted and so grateful, and we are going to do our part to make him proud of us. We definitely will make sure that your efforts were not in vain. Thank you. Thank you. Shelly had the world's greatest chef in here to teach her and to help her business. But she may throw this all, the whole system out the window with the whole menu. Only time can tell. Can we have 30 seconds, please? I think this is my office. Are you asking me for 30 seconds at my office? Yes, I am. Absolutely not. OK. That just sums it up. Yeah. That's the only thing I haven't changed. <sighs> I really wanted a happy ending tonight. Why? Because this week I've met some amazing people. Mother Mary, what a sweetheart, and a phenomenal cook. Mateen, that guy has a bright future, and he is packed with passion. But the fate and the future of Blackberries rests in the hands of Shelley. And unfortunately, restaurants do not succeed when they're run by a dictator. I planted a mouse. Is she crazy?
In the weeks that followed, Hi, nice to see you. Customers responded well to the changes Chef Ramsay made to the menu and the decor. Mm, the steak is tender. After witnessing the positive reviews, surprisingly, Shelly embraced all that Chef Ramsay has done for blackberries. Nice, right? Beautiful. I like it. I was so skeptical, but Chef Ramsay has opened up a new world for us here at Blackberries. I'm ready for change. It was difficult for me to see that at the beginning, but here it is. The truth is the light. You guys enjoy. College Park, Georgia. Only 20 minutes from downtown Atlanta, this suburb is home to the world's busiest airport. And just down the street from the tarmac is a smokehouse called Michon's, opened in 2002 by the Wilson family. I used to be in, in sales, but I've always wanted to own a restaurant, especially a barbecue restaurant. So that's what I decided to do. Our daughter is Natalie Michon, and we decided that that was a great name for the restaurant because our passion, our goal was to pass it to Natalie. Enjoy. The restaurant did great. This was my daddy's baby. With Mr. Al being at the top, it made everything work really smoothly. It's out of college right here. Things went good, you know, for a long time here. And unfortunately, you know, uh, Al had got sick and he had to have an operation. My dad had a collapsed lung. The doctor told my dad just to stay home and take a break. Chest started hurting a little bit, so I need to really go lay down. A lot of things have gone downhill in the kitchen since Al has been out. Excuse me, when was the brisket smoked? Because it's cold. Since Mr. Al is sick, the cooks do what they want to do. We're a captainless ship. Yeah, whatever, dude. Go take a nap, dog. Our food is nasty. And then when you go to take it back to get another plate, they'll complain about it or they'll argue. Don't come outside kicking. Me, you got your customers here, do I? And don't come back here dropping smoke wings, do I? But if it tastes like shit, don't nobody want to eat that. The majority of the stuff in here is already prepped. Like the smoked meats, you're reheating those. All the sides are ready. All you're doing is scooping and putting it in a bowl. Is everything OK? The customers are walking out of here unsatisfied. It was slow as hell out here yesterday. What I would love to see is my daughter run the place, but she's just not doing, you know, the, the job. You never see Natalie in the kitchen. You may see her in passing, or maybe she's hungry. Can you hand me a, a, spoon, a fork or a spoon, please? She'll come in and get her some breakfast, or just come in here and rub her stomach. That's good. Natalie pretty much feels she can pass the book. I'm ready to go home. Al and I have a certain work ethic. Natalie does not necessarily share that work ethic. The type of manager that I am, I'm more hands off. I'm a little bit more relaxed when it comes to problems. It's too much wasted energy to be frustrated. Well, I have cameras that spotted around the restaurant that I can check from my house, and, and I'm seeing things but not going like it should be. Everyone sent their macaroni and cheese back. Between the bills, the rent, and all of the overhead, you know, we like $200,000 in the hole. We are really at the point now where we need Chef Ramsey to just help us, or it will be the end of the road. Before heading to the restaurant, Chef Ramsey has agreed to get together with Michon's owner, Al, who requested a meeting. Hey, uh, go ahead. How are you? Al. Good yeah, to see you. Yeah, thanks for meeting me here. Not at all. Good yeah. to see you too. Please yeah. take a seat. Oh, okay. Good to meet you. Yeah, same here. Um, talk to me. The restaurant, it's uh, family run, my daughter and, and my wife. But, uh, you know, I really want to retire, to be honest with you. Right. I just need to get my daughter to take over and run it. But... So the plan's for you to hand the reins over to her? Correct. Because I've been in sort of bad health. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, and it's still giving me some problems. And you mentioned your daughter. How old is she? Uh, she's 32. 32. And so how capable is she? She has the smarts. Right. Just need to get get it out of her. Right. I mean, it sounds like she's been handed this amazing restaurant on a plate. Correct. And you're frustrated that she can't take the reins. And go with it. And go with it. That's it. And when you had the medical problem, and obviously you're out of the business, how did that run then? Not really going. It fell apart. 
Right. I was watching it the best I could. So you were watching from what, home. Yeah, I got a little a security cameras I can see from my house and from the restaurant. You watch your restaurant on a security camera. Yeah, I got about 18 cameras. 18 cameras. Yeah, 18. Ow. I just like to see what they do. <laughs> That's it. Well, I'm going to get myself into the restaurant and I'm going to have a good look around. OK. With my eyes, not your cameras. Thank you. I'll see you back at the restaurant. Thank you. Thanks for coming. OK. I'll drive carefully. Okay. Thanks, Al. What a beautiful building. Wow. Hello. 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 How are you? Fine. How are you? Nice to see you. Yay. Nice to see you, Gordon. Right. Hi. How Natalie. Are you? I'm Natalie, good. Nice how are you? Nice to see you. So, um, the Michon name came from... My middle name is Michon. Ah, OK. So the restaurant's been named after you. Right. Wow. The decor is stunning. Look at this place. Thank you. Um, so, I met your uh, amazing dear husband earlier. I had a quick catch-up and he told me a few things. Um, I'd love to know from both of you, um, your role is what? Well, I love being upfront with the customers. Right. And your main role in day-to-day -day business? The human resources, HR. Wow. So I do payroll and different things like that. So I hide in the back a lot. You hide in the back? <laughs> I stay in the back. I do a lot of the paperwork and okay. different things like that. So you're not really functioning in the restaurant. And according to Al, there seems to be things right now that you could do that you haven't been doing. Really? When was the last time you took pressure off him? Mm. Are you always this flat? No. No. I'm just soaking in how you said, so I'm not doing much. Yeah, no, I just like, wow, God, if that was my father and mother yeah. would get me a restaurant like that with my name over the door, I don't want to be sleeping here. Mm -hmm. I would be doing a little bit more than uh, HR. I'm dying to taste the food, yeah, please? He basically told me that I'm just kind of like the lazy child with just my name on a building. That pisses me off, and I feel disrespected in my own restaurant. He said, you don't do anything here but payroll? No, you didn't throw me under the bus. You threw me up under the train. Thank you very much. You're very yes. welcome. We let you look through the menu, and I'm going to bring you to just starter wings. Is that OK? Brilliant. Oh, Thank you. OK. What I'm looking forward to Chef Ramsay doing is to say things to Natalie that I would not dare say. Because we are her parents, it's more than a business relationship. There is the personal relationship. Hello, how are you doing today? How are you? I'm doing fine. Welcome to Michonne's. My name Thank is Tadisha. I'll be your server this evening. It's a lovely name. Hair looks immaculate. My goodness me. Mm. <laughs> he ain't never seen a beautiful, thick black girl like me, so that's what that was. He liked all these curls and stuff. Are you that high maintenance, or is it just a special day today? <laughs> it's a special day today. <laughs> we don't make hardly any money here, so I ain't about to pay this every week. Mm -mm. Um, you've been here how long? I've been here for two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah, in your mind, what's wrong? What's the biggest issue here? Management. Management. Wow. So what does Natalie do? Um. Truthfully. What's her role? She makes sure we get paid. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. Right. OK. Natalie, she got issues. She lays it. I said it. That's, it is what it is. OK. Let's start off with smoked chicken, gourmet salad. OK. Beef uh, brisket, pork ribs. And what side? Cornbread, mashed potatoes, and the potato salad as well. Uh, potato salad, we can't do because we don't have it. No potato salad? No. Really? Yeah, the kitchen, hmm. Kitchen one? They don't like to peel potatoes. <laughs> well, it's true. OK. Green beans, please, and baked beans. Obviously, black eyed peas. OK, I didn't hear you say sweet potato oh, souffle. Yeah. OK. Yeah, collard greens. Mac and cheese, please. I'll go ahead and get your food. Yes, please. Oh, thank you. And that is the mm, smoked chicken wing. And when were they smoked? This morning? They were smoked this morning. Lovely. Yes. Smells nice. Right. So Enjoy. Three. Thank you. Damn, it's dry. What a shame, because it's the sauce. It's lovely. But me, it's all dry. That's disappointing. So I'm anxious to know what you thought. Yeah, do you know what? A bit inside it was dry. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, we just find out when they were smoked. I will. Thank I'll you. Take the Thank you. I 
am shocked that Chef Ramsay does not like our smoke wings. That just pisses me off because he's definitely wrong. Um, thank you. You're wrong. Uh, what a shame they were trying the chicken. <laughs> Welcome to Michonne's. Yeah, at least they should be moist. Why would they be dry? Because it's bootleg. Bootleg? Mm-hmm. They just don't care. Thank you. Wow. Is this this morning's batch? I think that's yesterday's batch. This is yesterday's batch? OK, chef. I have to eat crow. Those are yesterday's wings. Damn. See, I knew they didn't taste fresh. And why are they oh, serving guys. yesterday's wings today? Can't I get today's wings today? I don't know. Oh. Anyway, just ask him. All right, are we ready to rock and roll? A gourmet salad and all these sides. OK. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. It's enough. Oh, there you go. Lovely, thank you. Uh, God, that was quick. Really mackerel. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's my uh, smoked chicken gourmet salad. Um, Gross. They're rotten tomatoes. Oof. Where's my lovely lady? I'm right where? here. I'm sorry, though. But the tomatoes, they got old and sort of yucky and soggy. I wasn't shocked at all. Thank you, please. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the kitchen? Yeah, they don't care. Um, the, uh, uh, um, mm. The tomatoes, one of them is old, and the other one has, like, a ripe thing on it. I don't think it's a problem, but... <laughs> really? But I'm not a chef, so I don't, you know, I don't know. I think it's fine, but... That's right. Your name is only on the building. Get it right. They look dry. It is dry and chewy. It should sort of fall off the bone, but it's just dry. Cornbread. Oof. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Now that's really dry. Look, it's just like being in the Sahara Desert. Look, it's like a mouthful of sand. It's like sand in an hourglass. Girl, they fucked up all this man food. Damn. They mess up everybody's food. Hmm. Black eyed peas. Wow. Hideous. Absolutely shocking. All right, here we are. All right, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right. Close your eyes. Okay. What the hell? Do not open your eyes. I don't want to eat that. Our food is nasty. Open up. Mmm. What does that taste of? Nasty. What was that? Black eyed peas. You can open them now. Yeah, they nasty. Black eyed bullets. He hit the nail on the head. We got some problems. Thank you. You're welcome. I need a drink after this. <sighs> I'm in Georgia, right? Yeah. Now I feel like I'm in prison. Huh? They're dreadful. Baked beans. Canned. Damn. Hmm. Collard greens. Wow, gross. Way too sweet. Hideous. Beef brisket. Damn, it's rubbery. Dry and chewy. Look at that. You could pass that for beef jerky. It's like a, it's like a dog chew. I don't know too much about smoking. I don't even know nothing about cooking, but I know that ain't right. Wow. OK, can you take me through the kitchen? There's going to be some shit around here. Serving oh. brisket like that, I don't know where the fucking start. Here comes the chef. After sampling the menu that can best be described as miserable, serving brisket like that, I don't know where the fucking start. Chef Ramsay wants to have a little chat with the people who are responsible. Oh, God, here comes the chef. Where's Al? Dad. Yeah, come in, please. So this is Archie. Archie. And this is Terrence. Terrence. Yes, sir. Hey, no, sir. Good to see you, bud. And this is Terrell. Terrell, come over, bud, so I can see you. And this is Kelvin. Calvin, right. Oh, another chef. Come through. Joe. Joe. So, who's the head chef? Does anyone know? I don't do the cooking, but I'm a You don't do the cooking? No, sir, not the uh, small meat. Something not quite right here. What do you do here? I smoke some meats. 
Was there anything that I tasted today that was smoked today? Uh, this piece of shit here was smoked today. No, not today. Not today. Does that look appetizing? No, sir. That does not. When was that cooked? I believe on Saturday. On Saturday? So today's Tuesday. Do you honestly think that customers would walk through that door thinking that you're smoking meats three or four days before eating them? How are you eating them? We're microwaving them. Microwaving them. Come on. It's disgusting. For God's sake. Is there anything today that I ate that wasn't microwaved? The salad. The salad? Yeah. You fucking donut. Of course you don't put no, a fucking salad. it wasn't here. Guys, I'm not laughing. I'm seriously disappointed. And Natalie, you don't need me in here to tell you that brisket's like dog chew. If my parents named a restaurant after me, I'd make sure that was the fucking best smoked brisket. Your daughter doesn't do what needs to be done to get this restaurant back in shape. It's just, you know, I don't have the words for it right now. I don't know what to say. I just fuck it out. I'm lost for words. After a lunch that was almost entirely microwaved, Chef Ramsay braces himself for his first observation of a dinner service. Good evening. Welcome to Michonne's. And for you, sir. Okay. All right, y'all. Let's go for round two. <laughs> Chop pork working hard, homie. What's that noise? The microwave. Fucking hell, the microwave. What is that? That's seafood dip. Three rib tips. That's how they do things. They're just throwing stuff in the microwave, and it's ridiculous. Jeez, what are they there? Rib tips, rib tips. What's with all the back stuff? They portion everything and put it in bags. It's just madness. You're not even cooking, you're just reheating. Where's all this coming from? I don't know. That's how we've been reheating it. Have you been to another restaurant in Atlanta? Have you seen a restaurant? I haven't been in another You've kitchen. You've never been to another kitchen, no. <laughs> it's tearing me up inside of the moment. I've, I've never seen it like this. I mean, Ever. Chef Ramsay is criticizing every single thing that we do. Just because he doesn't like it doesn't mean that it's wrong. Show me the smokers. All right, this please. One. Wow, look at them. I mean, do you know what hurts more than anything? The fact that we, we have the most amazing equipment, and yet the product is shit. Brisket, turkey, chicken, smoked in these. Then we slice it, bag it, chill it. Then we reheat it in the microwave. Does that make sense? Could you have another, please? Wow, look at that. So how long have they been in? How long have they been cooking? Two yeah. and a half hours. So they went in two and a half hours ago. So they're ready for dinner. Yeah, right? ready. These. Little taste. Now. That's delicious. That's what I'm screaming for. They're, right. they're ready. They're All delicious. Right. We're reheating yesterday's fucking wings, and they're just immaculate. Natalie, don't open the door and then disappear. I need to talk to you urgently. So we have Rolls Royce and smokers here. Pretty amazing. And you got these that are literally minutes off the smoker. Right. And yet we can't hold them and serve. That's what we were trying to figure out. It's a no-brainer. Natalie hasn't proven to be able to run this restaurant. It's not any structure, it's just a bunch of guys doing their own things. That does not make sense. How much do those smokers cost? They roughly? cost um, 17,000 each. 17 grand each? Yes. So here you are, cooking to perfection and reheating the food in a $200 microwave. How does that make sense? While the fresh, tasty meat from the smoker gets held for another day, the kitchen sends out plate after plate of reheated food. Beef brisket. And not surprisingly, there is disappointment in the dining room. Let's try. Did that go out? It's like a dog shat on the side of it. Oh, no. Go on. It took us really, really dry out. Yeah, they're right. Tell me, the bone's dry. Guys, this brother's supposed to be well done. You know long. Where's all that going? They didn't like them. All right. Yeah. They just said they didn't like them. Natalie did nothing. This is your business, and y'all don't care. Fuck me. Is that normal for so much food to come back? Yes, yes. The whole place is disorganized. It's running with no leader. Absolutely right. 
It was such a disappointment because Natalie is letting us down. She needs to step up to the plate. As dinner comes to an end, oh, Gordon's inspection of the kitchen is just beginning. What's that in there? Chicken's cooked six days ago. And in here? That, there were the ones yesterday. And these ones in here? And these ones in here? But if you cooked them yesterday, why did they cook them yesterday? Look, there must be a 1,000 wings there. These people don't even deserve to be running a restaurant, let me tell you. I have never seen so many wings in all my life. Piping hot, stuck in a refrigeration unit. I suppose this is what you call winging it. And yes, there's more. That is nasty. I mean, it's like a mass grave. At $1.67 a wing. Look at that. Appalled by his discovery of how much of the food is pre-cooked. Look, there must be a 1,000 wings there. Chef Ramsay is determined to give Natalie and her kitchen staff a massive reality check. Can you just come in the kitchen with me? Please, uh, all of you, thank you. Let's go, let's go. What the fuck? Wow. You're kidding me. Oh, my god. Wow. wow. Oh, my god. Why do you have 100 smoked wings? Like, <laughs> you can't be for real. I am absolutely mortified. What in the hell is going on? We've served 100 customers, and we're carrying all this food until tomorrow, or the next day, or who knows? And we have a smoker in there full of fresh wings. And I could have cried to think that this was served first before the fresh ones. I've never seen a more fragmented, disorganized setup. I've never, ever seen anything like this. Just looking at that food on the counter like that, I'm like, wow, really, really shocking. You know, I look at it like, you know, that could be going in my pocket as far as, you know, as a raise or whatever. You've got the most equipped kitchen ever, a stunning dining room, and look at the amount of staff in here. But all the advantages can't fix the mentality of how we're working, with our head up our ass, rudderless. The biggest problem, the system. Tell me about it. And you accept it because you send it. You confirm that's good enough. You have your name in lights. And you can sit there and depend on your parents for another 30 years. Someone's going to have to step up. If these are what we cook this evening, at the end of the evening, do we throw them away? It's easy. How many, how many customers do we have tonight? 100. How many portions of wings do we sell? Roughly 25? Yep. That stops there. I don't need to tell you that. I just think you're in denial. No, I'm not in denial. I'm, I'm learning. But darling, by learning needs getting involved, taking responsibility. All right. Natalie, can I have a word with you, please? Everybody else just stay here. Count the fucking wings. I had no clue Chef Ramsay would be this critical. Chef Ramsay does not understand a lot of the ways we do things here. He was overboard. You've got your name in lights. This restaurant's named after you. Tell me, one to one, why you haven't stepped up. Just because you don't, I'm not going to sit up here and holler and scream. No one's I'm asked you to holler. And do you know what? I wouldn't walk around like Little Miss Perfect. And I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. The biggest problem is you've never heard it enough. OK. Being brought into this world with a silver spoon, you can't sponge. I will. You have to get off your ass and do something about it. What are we going to look at? Your father? Get mum to step up? Honestly, hand the reins over and let's get somebody else in here if you are not going to step up to the plate. I'm not just walking in here every day not doing anything. You are. Get your head out of the fucking smoker. You've been handed a restaurant on a plate, a stunning restaurant, and yet you don't seem to bother. I'm very bothered. You blow smoke up my ass? How dare you? I'm the HR manager. I would have had you fired in two minutes. The bottom line is, you don't want it. Joke. You're right. 
It is clear that Natalie's lack of leadership has resulted in a frustrated and ineffective staff. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning yeah. To get through to her, Gordon has asked the family to stay in the office so they can observe a staff meeting by way of the surveillance cameras. That was a crazy 24 hours, right? Yes. So for me, I want to find out what the issues are. There's the kitchen lacking a leader. Yes, yes. Like, that's yes. where all our problems come in. So that's why they all act like that. Sure, but I mean, who decides who's working where? In the kitchen, who does they the time They just gotta fall into place. You do your own? Yeah. Well, when we come in, I, what? To, to, to save the frustration and get through the night, when we come in, I ask you where you want to work at. Seriously? Seriously. Okay, why do they keep switching people around? If we know Keno is the strongest in the middle, why on Fridays and Saturday night Keno is in the damn back prepping food? It makes no sense and that's to me. Where we're gonna suffer. Why is that? If you're not gonna work where we need you, how are we gonna get stuff done? is and the key work, it's not consistent. This is my thing to y'all. We get, well, we don't have this. Once we've gotten to a table and rung a table in, oh, didn't we tell y'all we don't have it? That is not the most, that's like dumb. Half the time we tell y'all, y'all don't listen. You know what I mean? What, you want me to show you the empty bucket? No. I don't want you to show me an empty bucket. I didn't say Come that. Now. It was all on you. I'm it's, saying it's a two-way street, but guess what? Well, Big stuff is supposed to steal stuff. And when we find out... Everything's just run down, dwindled. Pretty much everybody just do what they want to do. Everybody's going at each other because it's, it's just, you know, no one running things. So everything is just hostile. If we had a leader in that kitchen, this place, I honestly believe, would be like night and day. But we need that direction. Are we not gaining direction from Natalie? No. Oh. No. Natalie doesn't step up to the plate as she should. It's so aggravated. This is your establishment. I mean, come on. The bottom line, the ship ain't gonna move without a captain. That's it. Got to have some leadership, sir. Period. It's so frustrating. No one's, no one's got the reins. And it's heading for a disaster. OK, just give me two seconds, please, yeah? It was painful to see and hear a lot of that conversation. I feel like a lot of the blame came on me today, and it hurts. There's a cry for help there. Otherwise, none of you'd be here. They are begging for, for guidance, for a right. leader, for a captain, for a, a guiding light, an inspiration that's here, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, and that's finding that structure. Right. You know, this is serious. Natalie, do you think you are ready to step up and grab the bull by the horns? and shake this place. I know I'm ready to step up. Do you want to? I want to. Come with me two seconds. Come up. Gay, come over. Please. I want to hear from you telling your parents, yeah, how much you want this and what it means to you. Um. You said to me, and you said I didn't do this for nobody else but you. And you said you can either run the business and take it on, or you can decide to sell it. I wanted to make sure that my dad's vision and my dad's dream came true. And I'm going to work hard to make sure that's what it is. And I, I, I want you to trust me. Yes. Are you happy with that? I have a little, I'm looking for a big hut. <laughs> it was really amazing her telling me and my wife that she can do it. And I hope she'll refocus herself to, to really get the business and keep it going. If you're ever, ever going to let go, now's the time. Mm. Rashawn's is a, a very important legacy to my father. This is his whole life, so I'm here for him. Now that Natalie has expressed her commitment to do what it takes to lead the restaurant... I know I'm ready to step up, and I want you to trust me. Chef Ramsay is committed to her. First of all, I was very touched watching you step up and telling your parents how much you want this. Do you know what? I believe you. I'm by your side now, 110%. Okay. Don't be scared of making mistakes. Don't worry about that. Okay. Yeah? I've made thousands. Chef Ramsay has opened my eyes to a lot. At first, I was kind of skeptical, I was kind of hurt, but I trust his judgment now. I've got something very important to discuss with you. I want you to nominate someone that's going to step up and become your head cook. 
someone that mends the smoker, that coordinates the purchasing, that controls everything running through your mind now. Let's go in the kitchen. The kitchen lacks a leader, and that's where I need to start first. Right, guys, listen two seconds, please. Natalie wants a quick word with you all. All right, gentlemen. So this is going to be some new waters right now for all of us. Terrence, you've been here for years. You've always had your heart in the right place. From here on out, I want you to be the head of his kitchen. Okay. For Natalie to make me a leader in this kitchen, I'm very excited about it. I'm ready for the challenge. Let's get this team rolling and make sure that we have put forth 100%. Got it. It felt great to take the reins. This is the way it's supposed to be. I finally have a sense of where I need to go to move this restaurant forward. You've got the badge now. Step up to the plate. That's it. Yeah? Yep. Good. Now that the restaurant's leadership is in place, Chef Ramsay has an important transformation of his own to present to the staff. Good morning. How Good are morning you? Good morning to you all. Nice to see you. First of all, where's Al? He's at home resting. Good. OK. It's time to show you a menu deserving of this beautiful restaurant. Ready? Yes. Ready. Come over to the bar, please. Oh, goodness. Wow. Hey. Hey. Darling, please take one and pass them along. New menu. It's easy to read. It's just a lovely, straightforward, stunning menu. And more importantly, <laughs> there's not a restaurant anywhere in a 100-mile radius that has spent the money you spent on those smokers. Those smokers is equivalent to having four other members of full-time staff in your kitchen. You just wasn't using it properly. So with the way we've incorporated it, it's the backbone of the menu. OK, let's start off at the top here. A pulled pork sandwich done with delicious corn puree running through the middle. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yes. Absolutely amazing. Next to that, we've got the most amazing beef brisket. Ooh. A stunning half chicken. Delicious. Smoked chicken wings. Look at the size of them. Do we need to serve any more than that, than a portion? And I've noticed the sauces. Every table has those amazing sauces. It's so. beautiful. It's, it's the look that I want to put out there. I feel great. Yeah? I am so happy. I have a special gift for you because you are now running this place. I'd like to introduce you to someone very special, Chef Adam. Good morning. How are you? Great. How are you? Good to see you. This young man, he's an expert in barbecue. He's been trained under Tom Calicchio. I've arranged for him to be with you for the next month. Great. What do you think the smokers back there? They're brilliant. I'm very excited. So a guiding light, a huge support. And you, if you don't pick up on this and stay close to this guy for the next month, oh, you don't have to worry about that. You're crazy. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Chef Adam is a lifesaver, and I don't even think he realizes how much, you know, I love him already. OK, bud. Thank you. Thank you. See you shortly, yes? Nice to meet you. I'm ready to eat. I'm looking at all this food, and I'm oh, ready to eat. Dig in, dig in, dig in. Oh, wow, yes. Oh, my god, mm. it is good. It was absolutely delicious. I am past excited about selling fresh products. I think I could do a cartwheel in the dining room if there weren't so many tables in here. You know your rib is good, but you can use your fork to break it apart. Everything tastes so good. Oh, my god. I need a plate. I'm very proud to sell this food. I hope that this new menu is symbolic of change to show that we'll just keep rising to the top. Now, who gonna wheel me out of here? That's what I want to know. With the relaunch approaching, Terrence gears up for his new role as head chef. Chef Kino, you ready to roll? Got my game face on, boss. And Natalie, with the support of her new consultant, Adam, embraces her new role as leader. If there's ever a time to make your mark, it's tonight. Right. Hold the reins and let them know that you're the boss. OK. Let's go, baby. I'm ready. Let's go. I'm very anxious to show Chef Ramsay that I can do this. I can be the Mashan of Mashans. As the doors open for Mishan's relaunch, diners are lined up around the block, eager to try the new menu. Yeah, it's going to be pretty full, so as soon as you can get here. And to help generate even more positive buzz, Chef Ramsay has invited a group of the city's most influential 
barbecue experts. This big table here are very, very important, and they have a festival. They have 15,000 turn out. This is it. This first impression is going to be this lasting impression. We need to do well. Hello, my name is Michonne. I'm one of the owners here. And I just wanted to personally thank you for coming, because I hear that you guys are <laughs> barbecue folks, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to do the smoke meat platter. And the fried pickles? All right. The catfish nuggets. It's to die for. Oh, really? Here we go. Who's calling out? Talk to each other, guys. I need a smoked chicken sandwich. Got your smoked chicken sandwich. I need a catfish nugget, please. With Natalie feeling confident that the kitchen is in good shape in Terrence's hands. See, I'll be back in five minutes. Yeah, I've got it, boss. I got it. She heads to the dining room to check in on the customers. If you've been here before, you notice we made several changes. As I was walking through the restaurant, I was pumped. All of our meats here that we smoke on premise, our meat is very tender, so. <laughs> I felt good. I was doing my job well, and everything oh. was great. OK. But minutes later, back in the kitchen, the cooks are having a hard time adapting to the new menu. Where's the fries? I need fries. And are having problems finding a rhythm. Hey, guys, we should be waiting for fries. Food is hanging too long. I've got entrees there, entrees there, and she's just stuffed. I'm starving. It's been like 28 minutes, so we need to have They wait 30 minutes for their fried chicken. Oh, no, 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 come on. I need coleslaw. Talk to me, three beignets. I need them down, please. You're still going to put the corn on it, yeah? Right? Still want the corn on that. Well, at that moment, I got them overwhelmed, you know, because everyone knows that this food is behind. Guys, we're getting complaints about long ticket time. So now everybody's morale is just like clear. We need to all be off the same page, guys. We've got ourselves in a situation. Customers are complaining. I don't want one more dish in that window until we get this board clear. I don't know how we're going to turn this around. This is a fucking nightmare. It's 45 minutes into Michon's relaunch. We're getting complaints about long ticket time. And although the cooks are pushing food out, they are not completing an order. And as a result, food is sitting at the pass. I don't want one more dish in that window until we get this board clear. And customers are sitting hungry. They're starving. Including the VIPs. So they're getting backed up in the kitchen. Okay. okay they're panicking. And all they're doing is they're putting their food up in the window. Okay. One plate on top of another plate. Okay. Food's drying out. Okay. So they have to take a breather, clear the board, and start again. OK. Chef Ramsay pulling me to the side helped me know that it's my job to jump in the kitchen and make sure that the cooks are actually listening. I need a fried catfish, and I need that fish fillet like yesterday. Terry, you know? I need you to listen to me. Yes. I need you to make sure that I start another ticket Okay. until we go ahead and clear. Okay. Claude, I really need to make sure that you're focusing and making sure that you're not just putting plates up. All right, y'all, let's roll. Yes, ma'am. Let's start. Got a lot of stuff holding up here. I need three wings on the fly. And I really got to get the burger because that's holding up the window. Good. Keep it going, yeah? I was frustrated because I still got food in the window. Waiting on a fried catfish, guys. But Nelly made me settle down. You know, the sky's not falling. Let's just focus, breathe, and get the food out. Come on, line. We've had this hickey before. How long am I black and snapper? Black and snapper working hard, chef. While Natalie has helped her kitchen navigate their way back on course. Keep on talking, guys. Let's go. She has also come up with an idea on how to entertain her special guests. Um, I would like to show you our smokers. We had some hiccups, so I took the barbecue festival guys to go out and look at the smokers. Oh. These are our babies right here. These are about four years old. Each smoker holds 700 pounds. Yes, you can. They were just so excited. Well, I like to see when people's face light up. We'll have wings on four or five racks at a time. Nice. What's the cook time? The brisket is about 12 to 14 hours, depending on the weight. OK. I think I did pretty good tonight. That's more expensive. Thank than you very much. Thank, thank you. Very thank very you. Good. Natalie's quick thinking has not only delighted the barbecue experts, macaroni and cheese and a souffle, I can go. Right here. It has also bought the kitchen the time they needed to catch up. Nuggets. Make the nuggets. Okay. Enjoy. Uh, All right, y'all, how we doing? Doing good. Kino, how we doing? Beautiful. OK. Natalie helped us get back on track. Very vocal, very visual, communicating with us. Is this coming out now? This is complete. Then take it. While Natalie has impressed her staff, the menu is a big hit with diners. Thank you. All right. I'm amazed seeing customers with smiles on their face. We haven't had that in forever, years. <laughs> Those are some of the best ribs I've ever put in.
Wow, uh, that's great. I'm so happy. It was Natalie's night tonight. I think she did a great job. Bye, thank you so thank much. You. Come care. back and see us. All right, thank you. Worked your butts off. For me, the big difference was the way that you still, under immense pressure, worked together. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on, come on. Okay. And do you know what? You have an exciting, dynamic owner tonight. You were tested and you did a terrific job. Let me tell you. And Al, he wasn't here this evening. God bless him. He's probably watching from his bed. <laughs> OK, but you did him proud, let me tell you. Chef Ramsay has been a real influence on Natalie. And now that Natalie is in charge, the future for Michonne's is very bright. Right, well done. All of you, well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that Chef Ramsay came down to give me a swift yeah. kick to show me that I can do it and help me show my parents that I can do it. Thank you, bud. <sighs> I didn't realize when Al made his plea that he'd be too ill to be with us here for relaunch night. But this restaurant, led by his daughter now and her loyal staff, made a major transformation tonight. My hope is now that he gets well and has the pleasure of seeing his baby becoming a big success. Wow, how ironic. Two miles from the airport, you finally earned your wings. Good night, Georgia. After Chef Ramsay left, Natalie showed she is more committed than ever to carrying on her father's legacy. How are you? Welcome to Michonne's. And with Chef Adam's training, Terrence is in complete control of the kitchen. I got another rib and fries. Got you. As for Al, he now has what he always wanted, a successful restaurant run by the one person he built it for his daughter, Natalie. Austin, Texas. Home to over 50,000 students that attend the University of Texas. Located only blocks away is El Greco, an authentic Greek restaurant opened in 2007 by Jake and his mother, Athena. This is my favorite one. I always want to open that restaurant. I always love to cook. Let's do this. You're, you're awesome, guys. Come on. My mother wanted uh, to open up a restaurant. I love to cook, so my mother brought her sister down, and we opened up a restaurant. I got a hummus appetizer. I'll get that going. I was so excited to open. The first half a year was very, very busy. Thank you. Welcome. Let's get this. Come on, guys. Those were good times. I mean, it was busy all day long. It was thriving. I mean, every day, just in and out, packed. But Jake is a big reason why everything is screwed up. In the last year, I would say, it's really turned around to be pretty disappointing. Wait, is Jake. In a typical day, Jake would spend three, maybe four hours here. Jake is not here. Not all in a row. Smile and wave. He freaking abandoned us again. I'm not spending as much time as I used to in the restaurant. I'm just tired of coming into work knowing that I got to deal with my mother. Come on, guys. Athena, it's going. I know he's not. Athena, stop. Get the water. Stop yelling. Nag, nag, nag. She nags constantly. Come on, let's do it. Athena, stop. Come on. I have to yell at him. Hey. Athena, I, if you come in here one more time, we're going to have problems. If I tell you once and they tell you twice, the third time I'm going to fire her up. Yes. Mom, get the fuck out of my kitchen. Jake does not speak to his mother like a uh, mother should be spoken to. The day before we peeled two fucking buckets of potatoes, where did the buckets of potatoes go? Did we sell that many fucking potatoes? I don't think so. This is a restaurant game between us. I see my son and they say, this is not my son. He used to spoil me like to death. And now he hates me. Mom, get out of my line. The turmoil between Jake and Athena. You can get the hell out of here. It's just been bad vibes, and it's really affecting the restaurant. The food quality is really low. They said their mosa kai and orso was way too mushy. 
What? That was nasty. Wait, wait. That was bad. Yeah. The morale is really low. Up to the um, threshold of how much shit I can handle, period, bro. Without Chef Ramsey's help, uh, El Greco's doomed. This fucking sucks. I put up everything, whatever I had, all of my money. This restaurant, if it doesn't work, I'm going to be in the streets. I wish I was dead. Greek restaurant in Austin. Okay. How you doing? Good to see you. It's good to see you too. It's a pleasure. Gordon. Dustin. Dustin, good to see you, buddy. And you are? Uh, the waiter. Okay, great. Are the others about? Yeah. Yeah, can we quick one Jake and Athena. Love oh, to yeah. meet them. Thank Jake. you. Jake, Athena. Hey. Hi. How you, How you doing? Hey. Farewell, thank you. How are you? Jake, I'm doing good, sir. Thank you. Jake. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, great. Hey, can I give you a hug? A hug? Boy. I was waiting for that. Okay, moment. let's have a little hug. Yeah. Oh, always, always nice. Welcome what, to lovely, my warm, Welcome. Thank you. Well, nice to see you. And your name is? Athena. Athena. This is your... My mother. And you guys are partners, right? Yeah. Yes. Good. Um, let's spend a couple of minutes catching up and give you a little insight to what's been happening. You got it. Shall we? Yeah. Things sure. have gone bad with me and my mother since the restaurant has opened. My first priority is getting the restaurant fixed. And if that gets fixed, I think our relationship will get fixed. I am um, so mother and son. Yes, sir. Uh, who just wants? You are obviously the chef. Yes, yes, sir. And I'm just the mother and the cook back there with my sister. Oh, you cook as well? Yes. I try my best. I try to do it like my mother and my grandmother. So authentic. It's Great. authentic uh, ancestral recipes. How old were you first started cooking? I've been cooking all my life, but I, right. I, I went to culinary school about uh, eight years ago. My mom always wanted to open up a restaurant and get her sister down here from Greece. I said, you know what, let me go to culinary school and see what we could do. So that's, that's what I did. Are, are we? Uh -huh. Damn. Are they awesome? I'm very good. Uh... Are you great at catching flies? Oh, yes. I am. What are you doing? No, no, one. come over here. I'm going to kill one. One no, second. No, maybe, maybe, maybe not in front of the customers. No, no, mom. No. There you go, there you okay. go. Uh, there you go. Well caught, by the way. That's, uh, that's lightning. Yeah, that was lightning. Of course, huh? I'm good about great flies. Great reflexes. Yeah. So let's go back to the beginning when you first opened. What was that like? What's the other one? The first eight months were great. We were busy all day long. There wouldn't be... Uh, a lull in service at all. Wow. But we was busy. We didn't even feel we was tired. What time do you start in the morning? We have to come here at 6 o'clock. We'd be here at Naturally. 6. Yeah. But on average, Not seven... my son. Don't say we be here yeah, because you are I not have, here. Yeah, I well, you're been here in a while. Yeah. But you're the chef. Surely you're here at the same time. No, no, sir. So what yeah. time do you come in the morning? Probably 11, 11 o'clock. Right 11, before lunch. 30. 12, yeah. Hold on a minute. Your mum comes in at 6. And you come in at 11.30, five and a half hours later. Yes. So if your mum and your auntie does all the prep, what do you actually do? <sighs> yeah, I cook uh, food for customers, yeah. You cook for customers. Yeah, no, that's about it. Are you tired? She's always tired. He's always, always tired. tired. He's still yawning. What do you think the biggest problem with the restaurant is right now, today? I don't know what the reason is. It's Jake. It's Jake. Exactly. I see my son, how he used to be and how he's oh, now. Stop. Don't what? tell me you are not, because stop. you are. No, I'm not. My son changed. He doesn't care. Not about his life, not about the restaurant, not about anything. How much? What's the investment for the initial restaurant? How much did it cost? Uh, I came here with $800,000 plus another five. Eight, $800,000 for this? Almost, yeah. $800,000. Everything's gone. Not only I'm losing all my money, I lost my son too. It's very dramatic. He doesn't want to hear my voice. No, no, Why? You're his nags. mother. She's nagging all the time. He says constantly, he says, I'm yelling at him. Even if I talk to him nicely, I can't take it anymore. The hell with the money, the hell with the rest of it. But losing my son, too, on top of everything. Shut up about that, please. Christ, man. I can't take it anymore. I'd rather be dead. I'd rather be dead to have a son like you now.
within minutes of arriving at El Greco, Gordon quickly realizes that the pressures of the restaurant has ruined the relationship between mother and son. I'd rather be dead. Don't have a son like you now. After that gloomy greeting, he's hoping that the lunch is a little more cheerful. You want to go grab something to drink? Um, I'm just going to have a glass of water, please. Glass of water. Um, and who's that uh, young man in the kitchen there? Who's that? That's Anthony. Anthony, may I have a quick word? Yeah, that's right. Dustin, thank you. Anthony. How are you? Good to see you. You're welcome. Yeah. Sit down. Um, what's your position here? Um, uh, kitchen manager. Kitchen manager? I run so the So we've got Jason, executive staff. chef, and you're the kitchen manager? Yes. Wow, so I haven't tasted the food yet, but I'm more shocked with the relationship with his mother. Is I that... Know. No, this is that is mother the most son. shocking thing when anybody works here. Is it him or, or her? And it all starts with him not showing up in the morning. It's all. Unbelievable. She just doesn't like to be here. He'll come when he gets busy. How many hours a day is Jake here? Mm. On an average day, I'd say about three. Three total hours in one day? Yeah, yeah. Is he in love? Has he got a girlfriend? A video game. It's unbelievable. A video game? Yeah. He's not playing it right now, but I guarantee you he's thinking about it. What a disaster. <sighs> okay, well, thank you for the update. Yes. I appreciate it. Yes, I wish I could meet you under better conditions. Every well, day. good Let's to see you. Let's get you some food, all right? Thank you. Well, could I uh, start off with stuffed zucchini, and then got to go for the lamb shank as well, that's all that, and then moussaka. Soccer, please. Cool. Um, and I think that'll be it for now. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Bring it up, come on. Well, obviously things aren't going right since Chef Ramsey, Ramsey and came out today. But I'm not gonna let anyone defeat me. I got it. Right. Zucchini. Let's fucking do this. Jake likes to just get in and get out fast. He knows better, and I know better, than to use a microwave and turn to Gordon Ramsay. Right now, Jake is very lazy. It's pretty messed up. The bears seen, dude. Stuff zucchini is delightful. You're screwed. What is that? So, so stuff zucchini. Stuff zucchini. Yeah. Look at that. It's like two grenades about to explode. My God. Now it looks like something out of an alien movie. When zucchinis attack. Oh. Wow. That's badly seen. Bland. No go? No. Oh, that's disgusting. I could cry. What a joke. Wow. Sorry about that. What did they say? Stuff zucchini was horrible. Oh, fuck it. We're good. Hated it. What? Try this. I did it. Is he hated? It's too strong. That's good. We are screwing. Jake's ability at this moment is zero. He doesn't care anymore. Lamb Shank? It's coming, man. I'm doomed. Completely. Lamb Shank? Now, there's a very anemic-looking lamb shank. Look at the presentation. It's depressing. Almost like it's uh, been in the microwave for an hour. I'm sure that they wouldn't microwave a lamb shank. I'm a little bit nervous to have gray the meat is. That is way too salty and, and badly balanced. Dustin? I mean, so salty. Who cooked that, uh, Dustin? That's Chef Mike. Chef who? Chef Mike. It's a microwave. I thought there was a third chef. <laughs> he kind of is. He does Are a we... lot of work in the kitchen. Uh, we use Chef Mike a lot. Whenever there's lights on in this restaurant, Chef Mike's working. He's a dedicated employee. He uh, asked about Chef Mike. He said, he asked who cooked it. I mean, I can't lie to him. So I told him. He's not happy. Holy fuck, dude. I can't take this bullshit. Hello. Hi. I am Kiki. Kiki? Yeah. How are you? Thank nice you. to see you. Nothing is good. May I finish my lunch first okay, and then have sorry, a chat? No English. No. Okay, I'm sorry. Scottish? No. French? No. Spanish? No. Oh. German? Uh, German. A little okay. bit. Thank you. I don't speak German, <laughs> but it's good to know. Thank you. Thank you. This is the one I'm going to serve? You can serve it to me. Go. It's so embarrassing. I don't care, man. At this point, I don't give a fuck about anything. Moussaka. 
Now you think of Greece, you think of authenticity. That is not authentic. It's a non-moving moussaka. What a disaster. He went like this, stayed on there. Hey, Jacobs, I don't care. If you saw this food in a dog food bowl, you would not think twice. Moussaka? What was that made? When was that made? Yeah. I'm not sure, uh... You don't like it, the eggplant or no. anything? And did Chef Mike have a hand in this one? Chef Mike has a hand in a lot of dishes. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. How'd you like to try anything else? No. <laughs> gotcha. It's just too painful. It's not possible for a restaurant to be so bad. Yes, about Chef Mike again with the moussaka. Well, where is, uh, where is everybody? This would be fun. I want to run away and hide. <laughs> hide. I'm putting out a high-end quality product, and if you don't appreciate it, then get the fuck out. I've never felt so depressed in my entire life. That was embarrassing. The stuffed zucchini? You didn't like it. No. Bland, depressing. The lamb shank? I mean, salty, sad. I know it was just dumped on a plate like a dog bowl. And then the masak. That was made this morning, was it? Yeah. Yesterday, man. What, what wasn't fresh about it? It was. It what was, wasn't it fresh was yesterday. about it? You served me yesterday. The only chance of it tasting fresh has gone. It's not even 24 hours old. So, well, what's not fresh about that? Executive chef, Chef Mike, the freaking microwave has more qualifications than you. I think your big problem is Jake. You don't care. You don't want to even be here, do you? I can see it in the body language, the attitude, and just the way you perform. I've come across a lot of executive chefs in my time. I've never seen one quite like a sack of shit that's standing in front of me now. Ramsey told me how it is. I feel the same way. Could I just have a two minutes with the owner, please? Oh, with her? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. I'm really sorry. So it's another hope for us. That's what you try to tell. Yeah, I'm sorry. Listen, I need to be really honest with you. The hardest restaurants to fix ever are the ones where the passion has gone. And his passion nice has gone way before he thought about asking me here. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm going to be here. Tonight, I'm going to see how this place functions. I need to see everything as it is. I don't know how to do, Mr. Ramsey. You are my last hope for me and my son. Yeah, I just hope it's not too late. OK? <sighs> I'll see you later. OK. Thank you, Athena. Nightmare. I hope it's not too late. Ah. Uh... After a depressing afternoon with Jake and Athena. You all right? No, I'm not all right. It's going to be a long night. Word is spread that Chef Ramsay is at El Greco, and the restaurant is fully booked. How you guys doing? Now Gordon hopes to get some more insight into how Greco operates in a dinner service. This is Diego. Diego. What's your role? Well, pretty much as great a line cook. Line cook? Yeah. yeah. Good. And what your training, what, what have you done? Well, I've been cooking in Austin in various different restaurants. So okay. I'm 18, I'm 32 now. Wow, so 14 years experience on yeah. the line. Wow. Let's go. Okay. I'll take the kebabs as well, except with shrimp. Here come the peas orzo for the second order. Get this out. You got green beans. There you go. Microwave food. Chef Mike. 12 gas ring burners there and not one of the chefs is using them. They're all in the microwave. It's like we've forgotten there was a kitchen here. What is that in there? It looked like someone sat on a football. Okay. But it's a moussaka from it's a moussaka. Chef Mike. You'd be fucked without the microwave, wouldn't you? Unbelievable, Diego. I would love nothing more than to see both of these going to Nostra. It's really humiliating. I feel like a little kid heating stuff up in a microwave. It kind of messes with my passion for cooking. Like, I don't feel like a cook the way we're doing things with the microwave. As Chef Ramsay watches plate after plate after plate being zapped in the microwave, it becomes clear that Jake 
doesn't really care about his food. Here we go again, waiting in line from Chef Mike. We gotta keep the microwave. Yeah. This is incredible. The minute you walk into a restaurant with an open kitchen and all the chefs are facing out, as opposed to standing in front of the stove, get out. That's what's happening here. Unbelievable. Dustin. Is this normal, this? I have nothing to say. That's just how we do it. I've seen a diaper look more appetizing than that. I agree. Greek restaurants. More like a Greek tragedy. Pisses me off. What I think about my food is, it's healthy, it's fresh, it's, it's good, it's damn good. Yeah, reheated, right? microwave food. It's, it's not microwave food. I mean, how else am I going to reheat it? Don't break my balls about getting it, re reheating it in a microwave. He's been cooking 14 years. There's a whole stove there, not even being used, and this guy's like this. Come on, Jake. Fuck me. I don't use the word microwave. I'm not cooking it in the microwave. I'm reheating it in the microwave. Big difference. There's a big difference. I don't think it compromises the food, reheating it that way, but I mean. Say that again. You don't think it compromises the food? I don't think so. Oh, my god. Oh, they're going to have a big pie. Oh, my god. It doesn't compromise the standard of food? No. Wow. Yeah, you fuck off. How's that? There we go. Go. Get out of my line. Jake. Yeah, Jake. I got it. Look, Jake. I'm trying to yeah. put Jake. out food. I'm Jake. not here to talk something. to you. Take your head out your ass and just start acting like a man and start taking responsibility for something, will you? Hey, I'm taking responsibility. You are. And you think you're smart telling me to fuck, fuck I don't want to fuck around. So, how about showing a little bit of respect for what you're doing? Go. Off my line, let me do my job. Get out of here. Jake, Jake, I'll go with pleasure. It's an hour and a half into dinner service at El Greco. Reheated. Microwave food. And while Chef Ramsay has had enough with the microwave. Yeah, you fuck off. How's that? There we go. Jake has had enough of Chef Ramsay. Go. Get out of my line. You think what? it's smart telling me to fuck, fuck off? I don't want to fuck around. So Whatever. how about showing a little bit of respect for what you're doing? Go. Get off my line. Let me do my job. I'll go. With pleasure. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I need table 20. I know it's a mess. A mess? You can fix it. You can tell him whatever we have to do, and we will do it. I've never seen a kitchen function with a microwave as much as here. OK. All right. That's number one. Number two. Your son doesn't care. It's depressing. There's three chefs standing on the line, and not one person's cooking. OK. If you have passion, and love for food. You don't zap it, you don't microwave it. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. Greek restaurant, nuclear power station. He's right, Mr. Ramsey. My son changed. He doesn't even care about himself. Makes me feel that. Honestly, seriously, I'm in shock. Let me tell you why. The busiest chef tonight is Chef Mike. And how dare you tell me that food cooked in the microwave... It's not cooked in the microwave. It's reheated. Are you honestly saying there's no difference in food that's been reheated than cooking something fresh? I mean, I don't think it tastes that much different. There's no love, no care, no passion. She doesn't care. I'll see that. Please. She has to care. Athena. You have to take in charge, hey, and quiet. you are not. Quiet. Quiet. OK? Get out of my fucking restaurant. Right now. Out. It's not your restaurant. Yeah, it is my restaurant. Out. I'm not going to listen to your bullshit, OK? I wouldn't be alive right now if I talked to my mother the way Jake does. My mom would murder me. Athena, you know what? I'm sick and tired of nag, 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 nag every goddamn day. Oh, you need, you need leave me to... alone. Oh, yeah, leave you alone. I need to go and have a fucking good thing. I got you. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. My son gave up. Jack should be more committed to this restaurant. You have to change, James. I hope my son comes to his senses. 
And Chef Ramsay will bring the old Jake back. I can give my life for that. Come and prep. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be here at 10 o'clock. As another day begins, Athena and her sister Kiki arrive early to begin the daily ritual of prepping for lunch and dinner. But in spite of promising to be there at 10 o'clock, Jake is nowhere to be seen. The bank, Manu Bayo, is in my name. He's blowing it for me. They tell you 10 o'clock, be 10 o'clock here. I don't want to hear your bullshit or her bullshit. That's why I don't come down here. This is exactly why I don't come down, because they yell at me, they gang up on me. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK. You are, you are. There's nothing left of me in here. I'm sick of it. Oh, I think he's not anymore a human. I don't know what he is. After spending the morning doing research around Austin, Gordon is ready to put some changes into effect. Morning. Morning. But the real question is, is Jake ready to change his attitude? Morning. Morning. How are you? I'm OK. Yeah? You don't look OK. What's going on? I just had an argument with my son. This is what happens every day. If he tells me he's going to come at 10 o'clock, he comes 12 o'clock. This is crazy. What did she say? Excuse me? I, I don't understand. This is ridiculous. Get in here, please. Two minutes. Yes, sir. The atmosphere in here is horrific. What's going on? I don't want to be in here with these two. I really don't. Every time I walk in here, they look for something to complain at me. And then they both gang up on me. And I don't need you two fucking me coming in here and you guys yapping and yapping and yapping. I don't want to hear that shit in the morning. I really don't. No. Yeah, whatever. Why is she so upset? What was that? Please? They say I don't come down on time. No, you but never I do. I don't. You never do. This is the reason. No. All, all, you, do, all you do is yell and you mad, creating Athena. Them. No, I don't create it. Athena, yes. who the hell wants to come down early in the morning and listen to people yelling at him? I don't know what else I'm going to do. I'm up to here with the, I get very upset. That's what I got to put up with every morning. He doesn't give a damn he must about damn. mine. Come on, it can't be that cold-hearted. Yeah, he I, is I, cold sometimes hearted. I don't. I mean, I don't want to deal with it, dude. He I mean, if you put up with this shit for two years, you're not going to give a damn about it either. You won't. They're not your friends, it's your mom and your aunt. Yeah. He doesn't give a and damn it, about that. No, That's but why, we why should I give a damn when you're swearing at me, you're cursing yeah, me, you're calling me names all day long? Yeah. This is what I got put up with every fucking morning. Every morning. You, know I mean? you don't need to be here. You and her do not need to be here. I don't need this fucking stress. Excuse me, Kiki, please. Oh, please. I'm going to go home. You know, I'd be better off with both of you staying home and let me do what I need to fucking do. Then do it. I will. Don't fucking come to work. You and her leave.
after years of pain and suffering at El Greco, the family has finally reached its breaking point. Don't fucking come to work. You and her leave. Don't come. But is that what you really want? Is that what you did? No, down? I don't really want that. No. What the fuck are we doing? We didn't do this in the beginning. All this arguing has brought our restaurant down and brought our relationship to a halt. This fighting has got to stop. Yes. This is insane. He has to commit to getting in here earlier, and you have to stop beating him with a stick. What do you want me to do? Wipe the board clean. Are you willing to change? I am willing to change the Because it's got to stop today. Stop right now. I'll start all over again like it's the first day. And that is a commitment that all three of you. If my son can change, I think I'm going to be the most happiest mother in the world. We've forgotten the importance and the advantage of having a family-run restaurant because when it works brilliantly, it's amazing. And we have to get back. And it's not going to get any better unless you change, all three of you. OK. I got my mom and aunt back. I really love both of them. You know what I'm saying? I don't like arguing with them. I love my aunt like she is my mom. Now that the family has made a commitment to work together, as opposed to fighting each other. Right, I just need all of you for two minutes outside, please. Chef Ramsay has made a commitment of his own that he hopes will have a major impact on the dining experience at El Greco. They're going to run us over. Yeah, a car, bam. <laughs> it's a firing squad. <laughs> I had fixed the problem in the restaurant. I ran over everybody. Chef Mike, you've been so busy. It's time that you took a little vacation. What's going on? I don't know. Hey, guys. I've got something to, uh, to show you. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to say goodbye oh, to a very busy Chef Mike. Chef Mike. Yeah, guys, back. <laughs> yes. Later, Chef Mike. Yeah. Adios, amigos. Chef Mike is gone. Good riddance. Chef Mike, it was good knowing you, but we're better off without you. Chef Mike, nice shot. Has left the building. <laughs> has left the building. A beginning of a new era. Yes, sir. Because we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. And you do not need a microwave to cook in your restaurant. You know, it's a family business. By losing my passion, I've hurt the restaurant, I hurt my employees, I hurt my customers, and I need to get back to the basics and cook food the way it needs to be cooked, and that's what I'm gonna do. With a microwave no longer the essential piece of equipment in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay begins to put his plan into effect, cooking fresh Greek food. We're gonna do a grilled salmon. Nicely seasoned, mm -hmm. salt, pepper, okay. Extra touch of salt on the skin. And getting Jake passionate about cooking again. Nicely marked, all the way around. Literally, 90 seconds on each side. You got it. I'm not in here to pre-cook food. I'm here to cook it. That's why I went to school. That's why I'm in here. We'll take a spoon of tzatziki just on the plate. The salmon that sits on there. That's beautiful. Jake's passion, I think, is coming back for cooking. I think I'm going to have my son back. Now, start tasting. Yeah, it tastes really good. Wonderful. I'm excited for Jake and Athena. I feel a huge weight has been lifted here. I feel like uh, I can actually be a chef now. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Woohoo! Now that the family at El Greco is focused on moving ahead instead of looking behind, Chef Ramsay's renovation team works through the night to give El Greco its own unique identity. Good morning. Are you ready to We're see ready. the ready. new restaurant? Yes, I'm ready. I want to go in. I want to see it. Right, let's go. All right. Let's go. Ladies go. first. Oh, oh wow. 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 That's great. Come on. Great. Yeah. Yes. 
No. Oh. It's very live. Yeah. It is beautiful. Yes. It when is. you walk through these doors, you think of Greece. That is awesome. The restaurant was soulless. It was dull, it was drab, no identity. Now when you walk in, it's clean, it's Mediterranean. I it's like it. Keeping with the classic Greek flag with the blue and white, chairs, blue and white, the silhouettes on the walls, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I notice something different every time I look. And you have a centralized table here. And look at it, it's got the right height, we've got new stools, brush stainless steel. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. I love it. This is this nice. perfect, the picture. Everything's perfect. Words can't describe how I feel about the restaurant. This is like a new place. It's a new beginning, a fresh start. That's, that's what we want. It's awesome. With the excitement of the new dining room still in the air, Chef Ramsay's carefully designed menu is ready to be revealed. Welcome to the most amazing, vibrant Greek menu here in Austin, Texas. And guess what? Chef Mike didn't touch a thing. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't touch a thing. We're gonna start off with the lamb chop. Lightly seasoned, lightly marinated, and grilled to perfection. Half a roasted chicken. Amazing. Oh, grilled octopus, braised slowly, and served with a little Greek marinade. Yeah, that's very classic. Additional entrees, pressed eggplant moussaka. Yeah, and the beef moussaka running alongside it. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. OK, get some knife and forks, dig in. Yeah? Grab me one of these. <laughs> very nice. Mm, dude, that's killer. Amazing. Oh. That was phenomenal, too. My dream came true. This is a new start for us, for me and my son and my sister. It's a new beginning. Okay. Hello. Welcome to El Greco. What can I start you off with? It's relaunch night at El Greco. Let me get the deep Deep Rizaga? It's all going to feel really weird and awkward, but of course it's going to feel weird because we're laying down the foundation again. And for the first time in a long time, everything will be cooked fresh to order. There we go. We got a crispy feta and we got a grilled octopus. Let's do this, dude. It feels awesome to finally be able to cook again. I want to hit the road running. Drop the feta, please. I'm ready to go. Drop the feta, please. I got oh, it. Feta. I got it. I should be doing it. I should be saying I'm dropping the feta. Go ahead. Come on, finish. As stunning fresh food makes its way out to the diners, it's fantastic. The demand on the kitchen continues to grow. Drop a falafel, OK? I'll get that. But just as importantly, so does Jake's enthusiasm. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Jake, Jake, you can't do everything. Yes, sir. I am now plating the veggie. Falafel. Wait, hey, falafel. Put these in the oven. Falafel. First thing. These are the falafels? Yeah. I got it. Jake. Yes, sir. Jake. Yes, sir. Talk to us. Come on. Talk to us. OK. There you I go. need you to uh, start getting these two tickets out right here. Call them out for me. OK. Walk in. No, 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 no. That's a bad idea. Let me put these up. <sighs> Unbelievable. When I first arrived here, Jake was just a lazy chef doing nothing. Now he's the other extreme. He's doing everything and delegating nothing, which is just as dangerous. Unbelievable. <laughs> Hey, what's this lamb doing here, man? We selling this? With Jake unwilling to accept help from anyone. How long have we been here? We've been here like an hour, hour and a half. The kitchen is completely stalled, and a relaunch that started off so well is now in jeopardy. What else can I be doing? <sighs> Jake, can you answer me? What? What are you doing, man? You I don't listen to shit. Because, because, because I don't got nothing for you to do yet. Jake's got to be able to either work with us better or the whole thing will go down. Don't give me attitude, Diego, please. We have a chance starting today to do things completely different and we should work together. God damn you people, man. Well, yeah, yeah. Can't be fucking nobody hey, else. Hey, dude, one more fucking lip from you, you're done. Both of you. I think my son is to pull off. Come on, Jake. Or it's going to fall apart. Listen to what I'm telling you. Oh, God. It's relaunch night at El Greco. I got it. Nice. I got it. And with Jake trying to run the entire kitchen solo. What are you doing, man? You don't listen to because, shit. I because I don't got nothing for you to do yet. Dinner service is on the verge of disaster. God damn you people, man. Well, yeah. Can't be fucking nobody hey, else. Hey, dude. One more fucking lip from you, you're done. Both of you. This is ridiculous. Well, Jake, two seconds. Anthony, Anthony, come here. Diego, Jake. Yes, sir. Two seconds. 
You have got to start delegating. We're about to go down. Stop running around and delegate these two. You got it. I'm, I'm Stay as a team, guys. Don't start fucking arguing. There was a lot of mistakes that shouldn't be happening at this point. Chef Ramsay is totally right. I need to delegate more, so this is it's going to stop. Green beans, green beans, we got them, right? Right here, chef. I need an orzo, a bean, and a pilaf ready. Right here, chef. Good. All right. With Jake finally working in tandem with his team in the kitchen. This is going to 28. Thank God. Stunning, delicious Greek dishes are once again leaving the kitchen. Gorgeous, huh? That yeah. is some intense mufasa. Everybody had smiles on their face. Everybody in the dining room. Happy? Oh, great. The tickets took a little bit of time, but they love the food. Eat. Oh, please. Make me a steak plate, please. That's it. That's all I want. That's it. That's all you got. I'm happy with the results of what we were pushing out tonight. We made a few mistakes, but we made good food. And it actually felt good to smell the smells and hear the sounds and actually really be cooking. Uh, that's it. I don't, we have another thing. We don't have any more tickets. They're done. They're done. That ticket is done. Take care. Thank you. Thanks for being patient. Oof. OK. In a matter of days, we've come a very, very long way. Let me tell you that. And the atmosphere in here tonight, in comparison to when I first walked through those doors, the difference is night and day. Very good, guys. Well done, you. Ramsey, he's the man. And no one else could have done it but him. Jake's a hard cookie to crack. He, he bashed it. It was a major, and I mean major, transformation. I think we've been given um, kind of a golden ticket to either bring this restaurant to the brink of greatness or to flush it down the toilet. And it's totally up to Jake and Athena at this point. Here's to El Greco. Let's go! Well done. Breaking the plates is like breaking the old habits. We can wipe this clean. New start, new beginning. Jake, you were under pressure tonight. If I can give you one piece of advice, you need to show respect to your team. Yes, sir. You're their leader. Yes, You're sir. their inspiration. I was very proud of him. It's a good feeling, man. I'm so happy it's... about that. Not a lot of people get second chances. Yeah, we're definitely not going to squander it. We're going to move forward and make something of it. Athena, you need to respect him, and he needs to respect you. Exactly. Give me a hug. Oh, that was a big wet smudgy. Chef, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Look after yourself. Yes, sir. Oh, look after your team. Yes, sir. Team first. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. For nearly two years, this restaurant was microwaving everything. So the fact that we had a successful relaunch is amazing. But the biggest, and I mean the biggest miracle of all, is the fact that we brought Athena and Jake together. And quite honestly, I didn't think that was going to happen. Wow. Chef Mike, rest in pieces. In the months that followed, Welcome to El Greco. Let's do this. El Greco received positive feedback from the community. This is fantastic. It has a really good flavor. And it appeared as though the restaurant was going to be turned around. But Jake and Athena's insurmountable debt was too much to overcome. And the mother and son were forced to close El Greco.